Awesome. Thank you so much. I am really excited to be here with you guys. I love personal branding and professional branding, however you want to call it. Uh, I've been teaching this for a very long time, but overall, my name is Nicole Vicevic. You don't have to learn how to pronounce the last name. Uh, Nicole J is fine. And for me, my goal today is that you guys leave defining what makes a good brand and starting to identify your own professional brand. Because I will tell you, I work in the placement recruiting space right now, and it is very competitive to get a job, especially for people who are going to be graduating soon. It is tough. Usually it takes about 10 to 15 years to catch up with peers who didn't graduate during a recession. And on top of this, I can't imagine how a pandemic affects it. So um, needless to say, making yourself a comp competitive candidate is incredibly important right now. Um, also keeping in mind though, that it's not impossible. So sometimes people will scare you saying like, there's no opportunities, there's nothing out there. And that's simply not true. The opportunities are out there for individuals who are ready and who are showing that they're, they're eager and willing to jump on board for whatever opportunities um, align with their career paths. Um, for me personally, just so you know a little bit about my background, I've done over 400 hours of training and career coaching um, just over the last three years. I do run a small team of 10 and we host over a dozen different career training programs across the Chicagoland area, um, anywhere from high schoolers to um, people who have graduated um, college to adults, um, especially right now we're doing a lot of adult career transitioners, but um, run a lot of career pathway programs. And I also help develop career pathway programs for Fortune 500 companies. And I have uh, done a TEDx. I, what else? I do I do have a small like one-on-one -on -one coaching business where I do one-off uh, kind of job seeking questions with individuals. So hopefully you can trust me with that kind of information in your hands. Um, but if not, hopefully by answering your questions, I'll be able to, uh, to show you some useful things today. So with that, I want to talk about what makes a good brand. And I'm going to, I'm very much an engagement based kind of person. So hopefully you guys aren't just, you know, walking around with your phones. Uh, I would love in the chat if you guys let me know if first, are you an iPhone or a Samsung kind of person? iPhone, Samsung, where are we at in this particular group? Okay, we've got some intense iPhone vibes coming off first. Okay, we have no lone Samsung people that I see so far. Okay, it depends on the camera quality, perfect. Awesome. So we have one person who's switched sides at one point or another. That's perfect. When can each of you please put in the chat? And if I'm looking this way, it's because I have two screens so I can see both things. So um, can you guys put in the chat, please? What is at least one defining feature of why you would choose the iPhone over a Samsung or a Samsung over the iPhone if, you know, Dana, you switched over? I uh, don't know which one you switched to. It's simple to use. Uh, what about it is simple to use? Is it like the, um, is it the apps? Is it the, wh what about it? Is it like how you scroll? I don't know. They keep advertising. It's really easy to scroll. I'm like, I've never struggled with scrolling before, but okay. Um, user friendly. It's easy to understand. It's compatible with other devices I own. Absolutely. Once you get into the Apple sphere, it's like your iPod's connected, your heart rate's connected, your exercise is connected, your life is connected. Awesome iOS network, messages, sleek look, compatibility, customer service, awesome. Switch to iPhone because they came out with the three cameras and a majority of my friends have iPhones, so it was easier to group chat. Ooh, easier to group chat and have the blue bubbles, okay? Blue bubbles, very important, and FaceTime, awesome. And easy to understand and teach your grandma. <laughs> I love this. And iMessage and FaceTime, awesome. This is really perfect because when you guys are thinking about iPhones, right, what makes it the better option in this case? Sorry for anyone who's watching this on the replay who loves Samsung, but you weren't here live to defend yourself. So uh, I'm going to talk about iPhones because really you guys are building up a case for why iPhone is the better investment to make. Nobody's going to be walking around with two different phones just, you know, because I feel like investing over a thousand dollars into each of my phones just so I can have multiple. Nobody does that. You have one, you go along with it. And the thing that defines it is its brand. You know, a brand is a company's promise to its customer. This is, I'm going to make sure it's easy for you to use. 
I'm going to make sure it integrates with everything in your life. I'm going to make sure your grandma can use it. Okay. It is what the company is known for. It tells the customer what they can expect from the company's products or services, and it shows how its products are unique from its competitors. So a lot of the things you guys listed, the iOS platform system, um, the compatibility with other devices um, and specific devices that you like to use. This is what defines a really great brand. And when you are deciding which one you're going to choose, it is up to what your peers say about it and what you've experienced with it and what it advertises to you. So as we're going into that, pretty simple to make that jump then into, um, did it flip for you guys? No, okay, there we go. Uh, into what is a kind of professional brand? So the professional brand, you if you're imagining yourself as the iPhone, what are you telling other people that you can do for them? What are the people around you who you know saying about you when you're not around, right? When you're not around. Um, what are you, what are you actually telling people you can do? What are you actually able to do? Right. It's one thing if Apple says I integrate with other products, but if they didn't actually effectively integrate, you know, the internet would hear about it. So same thing with you, your professional brand is the promise that you make to those around you. When you enter the workforce, when you are employed, what do you bring to the table that other people don't? It's what you're known for. So what I'm known for as a career coach, uh, you know, Aaron was saying that somebody else was working with a career coach. There's other career coaches in the world. I'm not offended by that, but each of us buy and bring different things to the table. And that's great because I love myself, but not everybody's going to want Nicole. I love myself, but not everybody's going to want to go through the same training program that I put people through, right? They're going to want different options for different people. And I think this is what's key. Sometimes people are like, oh, I have to be this, or I have to be that. I have to try and go for this particular career pathway. It's simply not true. The only thing you have to decide is what's important to you and what you bring to the table and be proud of that. Because if you see, oh, I don't know, Rebecca over there is, it brings, you know, this skill and this experience and her dad knows this person, I'm never going to be able to do that. Don't attach yourself to other people's personal brands because even though in this particular chat, everyone loved iPhones, Samsung is still around in business because a lot of people still love Samsung. So maybe you're in a room where everybody loves an iPhone. If you're in a room where everybody loves an iPhone and you're a Samsung, move into another room, into another workplace that actually values what you bring to the table as a Samsung if you are a uh, phone in this situation. Um, going back to the presentation, it shows you and how you are unique from other people. And here's the most important part. You can shape your brand by the way you present yourself to others. When I first started career coaching, my brand was not necessarily on point. I'd say it's still evolving and still not on point. Your brand is constantly evolving. How you communicate what you do is constantly evolving, especially when you're kind of in the youth range. Like, Trust me, we're still youth. I'm still youth, okay? When we're in the youth range, we're still kind of defining what the heck's happening to us and how we want to define ourselves. So if your personal brand is adjusting pretty frequently, that's fine. That's actually normal. But we need to start somewhere where we can understand what a professional brand is. Your professional brand, just like the iPhone and you know Apple products in general or Samsung, it's what you bring to the table. And when the recruiters are in the room with the hiring managers and they're saying between candidate A and candidate B, which one am I going to invest thousands of dollars into and bet that they can do the job better than one or the other? What are those people saying in that room about you? And did you plant the right seeds consistently to those people so that they know what story they are telling? Because whether you write your personal professional brand or not, Someone else is going to write it for you. So it's better for you to say, hi, you know, I'm Nicole. I do job readiness training. I do career coaching. I run teams that do these trainings across Chicagoland virtually and in person. I, you know, I, I am telling you what my story is. I have 400 people, 400 hours of coaching under my belt, you know, and that's intentional, right? It doesn't come just willy nilly. And if I jumped on this programming, whether I said those things to you or not, you would decide what you thought about me and what story you wrote about me. So your brand is there whether you choose to write it or you let someone else write it for you. 
So you choose what you want people to be saying about you when the doors are closed and they're picking between candidate A and candidate B. The other thing to keep in mind here is that, um, you know, let me just make sure. Yes. So the great part about branding is that, you know, you get to shape it. So please keep in mind, if you're known for something or you feel like you're kind of like, Mwah. like I, I wouldn't purchase myself if I was in a recruiting room right now, that's totally fine. You have a chance to adjust that. So I just want you to start thinking. Um, can you put in the chat at least one thing that you would define your brand as? One, um, either soft skill or something you're known for or some experience you bring to the table. What are just some initial thoughts when I say, like, what are you known for? What is your professional brand? What are some initial thoughts that come to mind? All right, I'm going to stop sharing for a second because they put the chat behind. Perfect. Now I can see it. They are a young professional. So tell me even more about that, right? What does a young professional bring to the table that maybe a more adult, adult professional brings to the table? So uh, really, oh, do you want me to answer that? Or? Sure, why not, Aaron? All right, cool. Perfect. So really what I, I went with that because um, like if you look at my resume, it's not a, a typical um, collegiate resume. Like, you know, I've been in, I've been in the army. Uh, I have a lot of different like life experiences that are like atypical. And so I really went with young professional because it's like I've I've had this life experience that um, I'm not just a college kid looking at a job. It's like it's a professional attitude. It's a different type of mindset. It's more mature. And then I use the word young because age-wise I am young, you know, whatever career I end up doing, um, like I'm in my twenties right now. So I'd be yeah. for a longer time than an older professional. So what you're kind of bringing to the table is like this level of professionalism that people do not, who do not have exposure to the army would, would not bring to the table because mm -hmm. for, for real being green, like Look, when I was younger, I was like, I'm not green. I bring everything to the table. Um, but the reality is that we don't always bring everything to the table right away. And I think having that military experience ahead of time would be very helpful for you. That's perfect. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. Someone said adaptable to change. So, Tara, do you mind unmuting yourself if you're open to that um, and sharing kind of like why you think you're adaptable to change and why that makes you a great asset um, for your personal brand. Why is that something you want to highlight? Yeah, um, I guess just, you know, being thrown different, different events, changing things up, being on a set team, for example. Um, and then some, like, for example, our executive board changed last year. And so like having a set team and then having to now learn how to work with new people, um, I guess that mainly ties into work, being able to work with people well and, you know, getting to use your connections and resources to figure out the change and what needs to go from there. Yeah. So adaptable to, uh, to team change and to different personality styles. That's really important. I will tell you that's something I significantly struggle with. Um, I have my particular type A personalities I love to work with. And now managing a team of 10, everyone's completely different. So that's something that I'm learning, right? And you can bring that, um, bring that adaptability, that flexibility to different uh, learning and communication styles to your next job. And that's something that's really important that you're aware of and can communicate. Um, because I would say also, this is really important because the reason I'm asking you guys prove it or tell me how is because even if I say that I'm detail oriented, that, um, that I have a lot of diversity and I'm well-rounded, uh, that I'm creative and honest and genuine, my next question to you guys is to be to prove it. Right. Because everyone comes to me and they're like, Nicole, I have excellent leadership capabilities. I'm great at working with other people. And the reality is, you know, I always want to know how show me because there's been so many people who have said that then they come into our programs and then I'm like, uh, yeah, no try again. Let's find out something that's really true. So for every, for the things you guys put in the chat, I want you guys to choose one example, one piece of proof from your past experience, whether that's an internship, a club, a class, um, volunteering, um, 
anything from your kind of personal, a job, if you already have it, the military, it, anything from your personal experience that supports that claim for your brand. I'm gonna give you guys like 30 seconds for that. What is one piece of proof from your past experience that makes you know that that is true? Okay, so we say, you know, I think that my resume that I put together is pretty creative. You've designed many social posts and flyers and websites. So Brianna, does that mean you also know very intimately how to use either Canva or Photoshop or uh, what are like those uh, tangible programs that you use to, um, to develop those skills and to show the others that you can use that skill. Yes, I would say Canva and some WordPress too. Canva yeah. and WordPress. Awesome. And you've developed, um, you said, uh, different flyers and sheets and things for that, which is great. That is definitely hard proof. So especially if you can show uh, industry knowledge, whether that's of specific programs, uh, specific skill sets, specific industry knowledge, like Canva, like WordPress, um, you know, each field has its own kind of set of in industry insights that would help use that to your advantage. So when you say, I, um, I made my resume well and I made these social media posts, say also through Canva and through WordPress. Uh, we also have, well, working as an associate at Home Depot, I was constantly learning about different facets of the store and training in different departments. My goal was to be as versatile and flexible to the company as possible. Awesome, Sean. That's great because then you're showing I learned um, the ins and outs of several different departments. Instead of going deep into one, my goal was to understand the organization as a whole, which is and shows then you're also flexible and versatile and you want to be, right? To be flexible and versatile, most of the time you want to have an eagerness and a curiosity. And so you taking the initiative and talking about that, even though maybe you don't want to work at Home Depot your whole life, right? Maybe your next job is in, a, in business administration or maybe it's in, um, I don't know, consulting. I don't know what you're going for. Um, but that same skill set, that same mindset is what you can talk about in your interviews to show this is what I bring to the table and what makes me different from other young peers. Problem solving as VPM for my chapter, adapting recruitment and the associate process has had plenty of unexpected surprises arise that I have had to navigate around like time zone differences, utilizing Zoom, exactly. So I like that you're dropping out, uh, dropping out specific things like time zone differences. That's a small learning that if you hadn't at least tried to do that as a VPM, you wouldn't have learned those things that, you know, everyone who joins into marketing learns once they're actually in, um, once they're actually in their own, um, sorry guys, I'm a little distracted. Uh, once you guys are in your uh, full-time role and then utilizing Zoom. Yes, you don't understand how many people I train that once they come on Zoom, they're like, hey, what's up? You know, like, nice to meet you. I'm like, absolutely not. Um, or they do like the above phone selfie or, you know, they just aren't dressed professionally in a way that works. Also, I apologize if you're hearing noises outside. That's what's distracting me. There's like, I've never heard that before. Can you guys see my screen though? I'm going to keep going. Okay, perfect. So again, when I'm saying professional brand, I mean, who are you as an employee? What do you bring to the table? And what are those experiences that make you unique? Those personality traits that make you unique. So the value of the brand is it is how an employer or if you're going for a, a baseball team or a different type of team or a college, it's how they choose between one person and another, just like you choose between one phone and another. It's nothing personal. It's just at the end of the day, I have to look at two things and say yes or no to one or the other. 
Um, what do you promise to your employer, team, or school? What can they expect from you? And how are you unique? So that is your personal brand. In this particular photo, um, if we have, have it a longer lesson, I would talk about like Nikes versus Adidas. How do you make the case on which one to choose? Because they're all shoes. They're, they're both really respected brands, but at the end of the day, you're gonna choose one or the other. And how are you gonna choose? You have to make a case. So your professional brand makes the case for you. And it should be on your resume, on your LinkedIn, what you talk about when you're interviewing. Your message and your story should be consistent so that when the recruiters and the hiring managers are in the interview room, everybody goes, oh yeah, um, I don't know, uh, Michael is great at X, Y, and Z, and his message was consistent. He loves and is really passionate about X, Y, and Z, and I think he would be great because of X, Y, and Z, which he talked about consistently, and here were the examples he talked about. Keep it simple for them. So here's what I'm going to kind of cover and overview. Um, there are a few key things that define your brand. Um, the first one, and I have this actually in a particular order, um, is your skill, your actual experience and the expertise that you bring. This is your area of expertise. This would be your years of experience. So the person who said they were a VPM doesn't mean you were working full time at a marketing company, but you bring some years of experience of at least trying to put together marketing um, for your chapter. Or somebody said, I'm proficient in video editing software called Lightwork. So maybe you're not like the absolute expert on it, but you're bringing way more years of experience, even just through volunteering to the table than someone who didn't even try. And they're like, I just want to be trained. No, the less you can make people train you and the more you can bring to the table. Hey, I tried this. I practiced this. Even if it's just in your own company, the better. Skills. The skills are kind of those hard skills, soft skills that we talked about. Um, so these are going to be things like problem solving, flexibility, adaptability. These will be hard skills like can you train online? Can you use Zoom? Can you use like it's all those skills that you bring to the table. What I usually do and I highly recommend this for you guys. It'll be part of the exercise at the end is that you guys look at your jobs that you're trying to aim for consistently highlight all the skills in the job description, then try and find what the themes and the patterns are. For some of you guys who are more online savvy or don't like paper as much, um, you can put it in like a word cloud and see what kind of words consistently come up online. Um, for me personally, I just like to read it through and highlight and then find the pattern. So either way, remember, just like Apple's going to market to you differently than they might market to the boomer generation, you have to market yourself for the job you're aiming for. So I might share something different about my job readiness training to you guys than I would if I was talking to a high school group. It's completely different based on age, based on position, based on what I'm trying to uh, bring to the table and highlight about myself. So make sure the skills you're highlighting match the skills you're trying to use in your job that you're aiming for. Um, social skills and vibes. This is what I like to call like, you know, those people that are super, super smart and they're incredibly difficult to work with. Okay. I've, I've known them, you know, them, they are, it's those soft skills where it's really about how do I work with other people? What is it about me that people love working with me? Um, you know, and also being aware of the things that maybe don't make you so great to work with, but we don't highlight that in an interview in our professional brand. We're just aware of that. Um, for this one, it's what makes me really great to work with. And the last one, and the last two ones are motivations and values and goals. So motivations and values, these are things that are important to you and give you meaning in your life. And the reason this is part of your um, personal brand, and some people put it in here, some people don't, I personally do, because for me, I am incredibly motivated by my enjoyment of work and my mission to bring people connected to jobs. That's my mission. That is part of who I am. It's what motivates me. It's what I bring, what I value. And most of the time when I'm working with job seekers, it doesn't matter if you're motivated by money and you're working, you're trying to get a job that's going to help increase money. You should be aware of that. And that should be a part of your personal professional brand where you can talk about, you know, I am really motivated to meet sales metrics because I'm very motivated by compensation. And so I'm going to be the person who stays up late, who calls the client one more time, who continues to push who stays an extra hour so that we can get um, those the more money in and more money into our pockets. If you're motivated by um, 
you know, I guess my question for you guys in the chat, drop what you think you're most motivated by. What is your motivation in getting your next job? What are you kind of hoping to get out of your next job? What's motivating you to actually get it, right? Obviously it's like, I'm graduating, therefore I want a job. Um, I would like money, therefore I would want a job. But I mean truly, like intrinsically, if nobody else was forcing you to get a job, why? Why are you motivated? What's your kind of value that you're getting out of the job you're hoping to get? Money and being happy. So Brianna, my question for you then would be going deeper. What makes you happy within a workplace? Is that uh, work-life balance? Is that an enjoyment of work? Is that um, serving, helping people? Is it helping animals? Is it solving important problems? Be even more specific about what makes you happy in the workplace to apply the skills I've learned and challenge myself further. Okay, so what skills are you looking to develop, Sophia? And uh, what are, in terms of challenge, what would that, like learning and succeeding in those challenges, what would it lead you to, right? Um, in the next step in developing my skills, same kind of concept. Um, when you're thinking of like learning and developing skills, think about more long-term about what are you trying to become really good at solving, right? So when I say, I want to learn more, I want to develop my skills more, that's really generic. Try and make it even more specific because everybody on here, you're seeing the similar trends. I want to learn. I want to develop my skills. Great. That's awesome. That's a good thing. But what are the skills you're trying to develop and to what end? Um, because my, I want to develop my skills too, but you probably don't want to become a career readiness trainer, premierly renowned in, renowned in Chicago. Okay, like it's not your same goal. So, <laughs> so what skills and what kind of end goal? Making myself and the people I care about proud. Um, that's a really great example. Get even more specific. What is it that makes someone proud for you? Like what is that goal that you're trying to aim for? And um, what would make the people around you proud? And why is that important to you, right? Um, just thinking about those things. And last one, goal. I know that um, I'm coming up to the end of my time here. So sorry, trying to cram a lot in. Goals. What do you want to be doing in five years? And this is where, you know, to what end that question comes in. Because career coach, I can talk to another career coach. Her aim might be completely different than what I'm aiming to do in the next five years. And when I'm interviewing for an organization, it's very important that what I want in the next five years aligns with what they can give me. So when you're interviewing and talking and putting your information on LinkedIn, putting your information in your resume, what is that five-year goal? And can the organization you're working for or applying to actually help you get there? Because otherwise, if you're seeing that the roles you're applying to can't get you into that five-year role, then maybe it's a time to like reconsider which kind of roles you're applying to. You want those things to align. And here's why. Your success will be exponentially greater if you are in a role that aligns with your long-term goals. Trust me, I tried to uh, work my way in other career paths and my growth was good, but not great. And now that I'm in a role that aligns with my five-year goal, that aligns with the skills that I want to develop with an ultimate outcome of what I want to be able to solve and do, now my growth is exponential. I've already gotten two promotions and I've only been here for two and a half years. Like it's, it's, it's really a complete different mindset to think about when you're thinking about how do my goals align with this organization? You are equally interviewing them to see if they can provide you with the end goal that you want. Um, so that's part of your professional brand as well. So take a screenshot of this because I'm gonna be moving on. So I'm gonna give you guys just 30 seconds to take a screenshot of this. Can you guys see the top of the screen where it says experience and stuff like that, or is it hidden? Okay. Yeah, we can see everything. All right, great. Perfect. And so, you know, just like this woman on the left, you know, she's really great at budgeting. She has a passion for healthcare administration. The soft skill she brings is she's super caring, and you can see that with every interaction she has. And she wants to grow within a hospital specifically. So maybe somebody else might have healthcare administration be caring and have budgeting, but she wants to grow within a nonprofit that helps people um, within a healthcare setting. Maybe they want to um, help on the ground in uh, a refugee camp. You know, it could be, it's completely different. That 
candidate profile versus the other is completely different, which is why I think the more you can define what bubbles surround you and make it clear to other people what are those key four key pillars, the better you will be. So with that, uh, I want to give you an example of kind of those pillars. So for me, you know, I have four years of coaching and training, job readiness, organizing and arranging, social. Uh, I like to solve problems by talking with people. And I want my long-term goal is to be, you know, the premier team in Chicago for job readiness training. Other career coaches might not have the same thing. So who are you? All I can think about is that little, you know, I don't know if you guys watch Vines, but it's the, who are you? But that's what I always think about when I see this slide. So what is my professional brand? Now I'm turning it over to you guys. Um, these are the four questions that I want you to answer to start developing your own brand. Um, the first one, at a glance, what are the top three things my resume and LinkedIn say about me right now? Like, if I had to take out three things, are they really unique and identifiable? Or what are they right now? Let's just see where we are right now. Two, what are my long-term career, career goals? And become really specific about it. Industry, location, type of job, you know, as specific as you can get. For the jobs I want, what are the top two hard skills and top two soft skills that make someone competitive? So maybe that's a later project because you will have to do some research on that. And then the last one, what transferable skills, hard or soft, either way, um, do I have that I want to highlight to an employer to make me the most competitive person when they're deciding between two people? So I know that was a lot, sorry, <laughs> but hopefully it was a worthwhile amount of your time. Um, and this can start getting you thinking about what are those bubbles that are surrounding me? What are those things that are defining my personal brand, um, my professional brand? So I don't know if we're breaking out into breakout rooms now. Yes. Okay, perfect. So we're going to go into breakout rooms. I want you to start thinking about these questions because you're going to share it with, um, with someone in your group. The other thing is if you guys want to connect with me on LinkedIn, um, let me know because I'm happy to answer any more in-depth questions there. I am still answering questions from last PBLI and I'm more than happy to because, you know, careers change over time.